Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to take a look at this new little mini drone by Batinzik. It's called the Elfin, E-L-F-I-N. Little foldable drone. It kind of has, a, I guess, maybe a bit of a look like a spark. It's a very, very small little uh, brushed mini drone. Now, I've already got it out of the box because I wanted to show you guys that it comes in this really nice little carrying case. Batinzik's been doing this more and more because if you watched my last video before this, you saw that I reviewed the uh, Batinzik D68 and it comes in a nice uh, like aluminum carrying case. So they've been using this as a extra selling point. I really do like that they're doing this with these carrying cases. So I've not even flown this. I just wanted to show you guys everything here in the carrying case, how it looks. And I'll set it down here. We'll get it all out of here and show everything that comes with this little drone. And then we'll of course take it up here for a test flight here in the carport. So let me set this down. So you've got the drone, which I'll grab little bitty i'd say a mini drone and it's foldable and it does have an hd camera it's a 720p video 1080p video still you know a 1080p video camera 720p on the video 1080p on the photos so you just fold these arms out as you guys can see and then there it is they don't exactly lock in place so you could knock those out of out of their position in a crash the power button is here in the rear, so you, pr you press this in. Let's see if I can get it on. It'll hold it in. The little red light comes on on that rear. The battery slides in here. We'll look at it because it comes with an extra battery. So yeah, real, real basic. Um, it looks like it might have an optical flow camera, but I've not seen any. I didn't notice it in the instructions, but you know, I've been doing this so long, I tend to sometimes skimp over the instruction manual but i didn't notice that but we'll see if it does it looks like a little pinhole camera could be here that will work with it has altitude hold but if it does have that that'll look at the ground to help hold position you know sort of like a budget gps i guess you could say but i'm not certain that it has that so we'll have to see and you can manually tilt this camera but you have to set it to where you want it's a little pinhole camera so it's going to just be you know probably so so quality on that so you do as you saw in the, the box you there are prop guards i'll show you guys you can put those on i wouldn't mess with those unless you're a beginner or you're going to fly indoors a lot because of course you fly into walls you'll scuff up the props if you're going to fly outside like a, a day like today where it's rather calm you know this is a great way to get it caught up into a tree and hang there if you've got a um, you know the, the prop guards on so let me go ahead and show you guys what else comes in the zipper area here in the back so i pull that out it comes with two batteries they're both inside this in here but um of course i got one already installed and charged up so i don't have this one charged these are 1100 milliamp 1s lipos so you should get a pretty good flight time there's a little uh circle a little spot here in the back where you plug in the charger where it says CHA there and that's where you actually would charge it it says it takes about two hours which that's that's pretty long but you know 1100 milliamp we should get pretty good flight time out of this and then they give you three AAA batteries so that you don't see that very often with these drones so you don't have to even worry about providing batteries for the remote that's why I didn't put them in I wanted you guys to see it has this brand new pack of these off-brand they're just heavy duty they're not alkalines but that's fine for the controller so 1100 milliamps a pretty good sized battery and you did you get two but you only get one charger unfortunately i would have liked if they had included two so you could you could charge up both batteries but they don't got a full set of props and you've got your prop guards which i'm not going to mess with so you know a couple hours it says to charge this um you know again you're gonna get a pretty good flight time out of this guy i think and then you get a phillips screwdriver in there as well and then let's go over the controller it's really well labeled as i said it has altitude hold you've got a, your speed rates here uh, i don't know if there's two or three can this will be a maiden flight under the circumstances i am not been able to get test flights in in my current living situation so easily so don't know how long it flies and don't know how many rates it has headless mode if you want to use that i don't ever mess with that your photo button and your video button now it's all recorded over wi-fi to the app and then to your phone so there's no sd card slot so you're all going to be recording just the stream so we'll include that uh 
video stream. I'm not going to do a screen record. I'll just include the onboard video to my phone here in this video. You get a power button, and then you've got here is your um, this is your your gyro calibration. That's what that is. It's a gyro calibration, which is a you don't see that too much on these, but I like that. You don't have to worry about stick configurations. You just put it on a level surface, press that. I would do that the first time you fly it or after any crash, and that'll reset the level so it won't drift. You got your trim here, forward and your forward and back, or your up and down pitch and your roll. This is your auto takeoff button right here. So you can take off and land. You don't have to unlock the props, I don't think. It will automatically take off and then land if you press it. You can do a, a manual takeoff by both sticks down and in and just give it throttle. And this is an emergency stop. You need to kill those motors if it's flying away. You need to kill the motors or it's going to crash into something. So that is everything on the controller. Your phone will go in here. So I'll put the phone in there. And when we're flying, we can use it for FPV. But again, this is just Wi-Fi. It's going to be laggy. Um, just we'll see how laggy it is. Some are, are pretty decent and some are really bad. And we'll see if it drops frames or anything. So hopefully it won't. So we get a decent video recorded. The app that you use on this is the Batinzik Toy app. I'll try to remember to put a screenshot up here of that app from the uh, Google Play Store. Or, and, or the Apple iOS version is also called that. The Batinzik Toy. And uh, we'll show you that when we get out here and we'll fly it around. So what I do is I'm going to get those batteries in the remote. And get the drone bound up with the controller and the Wi-Fi. And then we'll take it out for a test fly. Flight. So I'll be right back guys. All right guys, so I have the little elephant up here on top of my in-laws car. It's pretty level up here. This way you guys will be able to see. Hopefully in my head cam it take off. So what we're going to do is since that's really level up there, we'll go ahead and do the gyro calibration. I have the app, the Potentic Toy app is bound up and of course the controller. So I'm just going to press that and that should do a gyro calibration. And then, you know, in, in the, the drone doesn't sit you know it sits rather level but you know you have to be careful when you do the gyro calibration obviously to make sure you're on a level surface let's go ahead and you just press it and it doesn't have many lights so it's not like you can really see it's doing it because the only light i really see is that rear one it's now green once it's bound it was red when you first powered up I don't see any other lights on this little drone all right, so we'll start recording some video. I'm going to pr press the video button on the controller and let's see if it does anything on the app. Yes, now I'm getting a, a counter. I always want to be, you always be careful of that because I've had a few instances with these toy drones where you start the controller to tell the controller to record and the app tells you nothing and you don't know if you're actually getting a recording to the phone or not. So sometimes I would just use the app just to be safe you're using just a wi-fi feed so sometimes they say the controller works and it doesn't but in something like the potensic drones they usually don't give you any false advertising on that let's go ahead now and just do an auto takeoff so let's press that button and hopefully it doesn't go up to the ceiling it kind of did i was worried about that i i gave it some reduced throttle because it has a preset height and it took off there and banged into the ceiling This is its lowest rate. And let's see, there's a pretty slow yaw, so it's drifting some. Let's go over and bump that speed up. There's a higher rate. Yeah, there's three rates. I figured it probably would be. Well, it's a lot sportier. So the yaw increases. Let's bring it a little closer so you guys can see. Let's go to the lowest rate. Really slow yaw. Middle rate, it's a little faster. And then the highest rate. I really like the high rate. So it's not going to be as ideal for filming. Now, like I said, it it mentions it. Well, it doesn't. I don't know if it mentions it or not. But it has. It shows that little optical flow looking camera. I'm going to see if that. I don't think it has it. And I'm not seeing any evidence that it does. It's drifting around a lot. There's nothing in the instruction manual about disabling or turning on optical flow. So it's probably what they've done is it has the actual little pinhole with a little piece of plastic lens but there's actually not any camera in there. That's my thought, because if it had optical flow, you'd be able to have it follow your hand, seeing it's not following my hand. Okay, I didn't think it did, but when I saw that, I thought I should at least mention it. Okay, so I don't. it doesn't have any optical flow that I can tell. 
You see that a lot in these drones. Whoa! These some of these lower uh, cost drones, but you know they don't always work so well. And optical flow is constantly wanting to hold position, and it can make these drones a not as fun to fly because they are. It's all you know. It's it's looking for a position to hold, so they they don't make them as sporty, so it can locate that image in the camera. I was going to maybe just fly in a carport, but it's so calm today. And even though it's cooler than it has been, it's in the 50s, it still feels great. So I'm going to take a look here at the Wi-Fi feed now and see. I can, of course, it's got some wobble and a little shake. Let me see if, it's got a, if it has any real obvious jello. When you give it, in the highest rate, when you give it a lot of pitch, you're filming towards the ground. Let's go up. Let's go into the middle rate. I'm gonna kind of try to let off it so I could film more at me. Yeah, I see a little wobble, but it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's gonna have some shake. You just don't want a jello fest, and I don't see that, but I won't know for sure until we actually get that video off the phone and include it here with the review. Now, again, I don't have the prop guards on, of course. If you put those on, you're gonna reduce your flight time a little bit. And of course, it's easier to get it caught up in a tree but this, this flies really nice. I haven't really commented on that yet. It flies real nice. I can do some, I'm only in the middle rate here. I'm doing some funnels. Let's try the highest rate. I should do funnels better than it does. I mean, for me, the camera isn't a big deal. I like just to fly a drone like this because if I want a camera, I'm gonna use one of my better drones. But I realize not everybody's got that budget to be able to have a more expensive camera drone. So this made the camera maybe a big deal and if it is, just stay in those lower rates and don't give it as, you know, let's go down to the first rate there. And let's go, and you can see even in the first rate, which is really lethargic, you're still filming towards the ground. And I have the camera tilted all the way up. So keep that in mind, you know, don't tilt that camera down or you're gonna never see forward unless you intentionally are trying to say, look at your roof of your house or something. I'm gonna go back in that middle rate Yeah, this flies really, really, really nice. Definitely fine for outdoors on a calm day or even with a little breeze. I don't think I see a problem. This has good power for brush motors and it uh, flies great, real smooth. This is a, this is a nice little uh, fun drone. Which, and it looks like it has a pretty decent camera. But again, I, I'm just going by what I'm seeing in the FPV screen. Let's do, a, let's take it over here on this rock drive. Let's do an auto landing, see how well that works. So I'm gonna bring it down a little closer. Let's just tell it to land and it is. There we go. And we can just do a manual takeoff if we wish to. We just do them both sticks in. I believe it was, there we go. And just give it throttle. Oops. I had started them up there and then I accidentally stopped them. I couldn't tell because of the, I got sunglasses on because of the glare and I couldn't tell the props were actually turning there. This is a lot like some of the classic little brush drones of this class, like the Hellaway 903. Some of those were similar size and really sporty. I think Parrot had a drone like the Mamba or something like that. Now this is not quite at that class but this is still sporty and smooth it just reminds me of those drones um the 903 was one that i think depending on which version some of them didn't even have a camera and to me this this is a, a drone that's meant to be fun uh to zip around your yard like this it's really not something that i worry about the camera and you really shouldn't either unless you absolutely you just don't have the budget to afford anything more expensive because you're gonna and the main reason I say this not that the camera like I said the camera looks pretty decent it said it just gave me an option to take a picture <laughs> um, it's just that you're filming towards the ground a lot even with the camera all the way tilted up so I think we'll just fly this until we get some sort of low voltage thing is I don't know um, the app Sometimes these apps will have telemetry 
I just don't know how we're gonna know because the only light I can see is that one in the rear and it's very faint. So now, sometimes these drones and controllers will beep, so it's, hopefully that's what happens. So we should get an estimate of flight time here just by the recorded video timer here. There's a bit of a breeze kicking up now and it's doing pretty good. So I'm glad this drone doesn't have optical flow because I want to be sporty with this guy, especially in the highest rate like this. And I said those optical flow, they tend to slow them down because of that. Yeah, this is, this is a nice little drone. Again, the Tenzik sells on Amazon. I think this is also why um, this may very well be made by UDI. Yeah, they, the Tenzik um, rebrands a lot of UDI stuff. Or I don't know if they even rebrand it. Some of it, I think they have UDI make it specifically for them. Um, they sell the stuff on Amazon mostly. And even going back to the T25 GPS drone, it, it was made by UDI. And the D68 I reviewed yesterday, that one, about well, yesterday, a few days ago, depending on when I post this, that also was made by UDI. UDI usually makes pretty good stuff. That's probably a good thing that Potentic does choose them. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna land it here again real quick and do another gyro calibration. The wind's moving around some, but it looks a little tilted to me. And again, I did that on top of my the car and it may not have been perfectly level. So let's just press that gyro calibration. And let's go ahead and do another takeoff. Just so you guys can see, it gets up, it looks like it goes up about four to five feet. So keep that in mind. Like when I did that first takeoff, it banged into the carport roof because it was a little too high. Yeah, this, I mean, we're in, trying to see the time here. I can't, nine minutes and something, and I'm still zipping along. I figured this would get a good flight time because it's, it's small. It's brushed and it's in the thing I was talking about being similar to those other drones. Now I'm getting some a flashing light here. I think we've hit LVC. I can see a red green, especially now that I'm in a darker space. These props are direct drive. They're not, I don't believe these are geared. They're sitting right on top of those brush motors. If anybody knows much about drones, that's more efficient. There's less heat generated. And there's less uh, loss. You're lo anytime you go through gears, you're going to lose some power just in that transfer of energy. And But lots of times the drones, they can't do a direct drive on a lot of the bigger ones. But on this drone, um, being this size, you absolutely can. So we are still booking along here. I'm trying to see the time again. We'll see how long. I don't, I'm not going give, to give you guys an LVC time. I don't know when that started flashing, but... We are, I'm lifting my head up, 10 minutes and 20 some seconds. Of course, I spent a, a very brief amount of time on the ground, but. Yeah, seems like, seems like it has a pretty long LVC. Yeah. And we're on the highest rate, I just wanted to confirm. I'm gonna keep it close because as you know, these drones, these altitude hold ones like this will just ease down, which I think it's gonna do now. Yeah. Let's stop it. Let's press that, that button and we stopped. The timer went away, so I don't know exactly the time on that, but it was uh, you know, somewhere in the uh, 1045 to 11 minute, I'm thinking. Again, the glare was making it hard for me to see. So what I'll try to do is I'll take that video. If I remember, I'll put the total time that that video was that we flew. But yeah, it was well over 10 minutes. This is excellent. This is a really, really nice little drone with a 720p video camera, extra battery, quiet, sporty, does funnels, yaw smooth for the three rates. Um, and even though it has altitude hold, it's still rather sporty because as you know, if you've been in this hobby, altitude hold also tends to slow down the drones a little bit, though not like that optical flow tends to at times. All right, guys. That wraps up the review here of the little Batinzik Elfin little mini drone. Hope you enjoyed this. If you're interested in this drone, I'll include a purchase link to Amazon down in the description and along with the price. Batinzik, of course, sent me this for review, so I don't know exactly what this costs. 
but you check out the link down in the description this would make a great christmas present for a kid and shouldn't break the bank and being from amazon you don't have to worry about uh waiting a month to get it or get it by christmas or have any bad customer service experience so check the description down in this video for the link to this drone be sure to subscribe to the channel guys i'd like to get to that 10,000 mark though i don't think we'll reach it before the end of the year and uh be sure to click the bell so you know when i do upload new videos and as always guys have a wonderful day